All right, so today we're gonna be talking about my top five foundation recommendations, currently what I would repurchase over and over and over again. The self tanner armpit right now is killing me. Just, just ignore that. Probably shouldn't have worn a tank top, <laughs> but we're past that right now. I know I have so many videos about different foundations, whether they're reviews or I'm talking about them in vlogs or whatever. And so sometimes I know it can be hard to figure out like what are my actual favorite foundations. So this is what this video is for. These are my current top five. I did a video last year on my top foundation recommendations for summer and hot weather with a really good mix of different price points, finishes, and coverage. I'll have that video linked down below. Definitely check that out because there are a bunch of other foundation recommendations in that video. So I'm gonna have everything I talk about today listed down below in the description box along with my nail polish, colored shirt, watch, everything is always listed down below. But let's get into it. Hope you enjoy, here we go. Side note, this morning I tried the Duncan Nitro. I got Nitro with oat milk and like the sweet cream on top. Listen, we gotta give a mini Duncan review right now. I'm in a Duncan mood. I'm trying all the Duncan drinks because we don't have that in Seattle. And they're like every block in Chicago. So, you know, gotta live it up while I'm here. <laughs> Get wild. The nitro itself is good. It doesn't taste as strong as Starbucks. The cold foam, Starbucks definitely wins. There's just basically like literally just like whipped cream. I'd get it again, but I think I like the nitro at Starbucks better. Anyways, let's talk about my other love in life foundation. <laughs> All right, this first foundation is one that's pricey, but I do think it is worth it. It is beautiful. It's the Dior Forever Matte Foundation. They have a glowy version and a matte version. I actually haven't tried the glowy version yet, which is kind of ironic because normally I am all about the glowy foundations, but I have been more into like a satin matte finish lately. This foundation retails for $52 and comes in 42 shades. The shade I have is 0.5N. This is definitely my shade when I don't have tanner on. It's not a perfect shade match. I would say it's like half a shade too dark when I have pale skin, but when I have tanner on just to darken this, I really like mixing it with the one size concealer. That concealer mixes great with foundation. It adds some coverage and it doesn't like super alter the finish. I love that concealer for mixing with foundations or actually wearing as a foundation. I have a whole Instagram reel on that. This foundation has SPF 15. They say it's medium to full coverage. I think it's closer to full coverage. I love applying this with a sponge. It looks so pretty applied with a sponge. My favorite sponge is from Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. The thing with this foundation for me is a lot of matte foundations can just look really heavy, really cakey on the skin, especially if you have more textured skin. This one is thin. I love the consistency of this because it's very lightweight. It's comfortable. It's like one of the few foundations where I don't wanna scrub off my face at the end of the night. Like I'm totally fine chilling with it on because it feels really comfortable. The packaging is recyclable. It lasts very well on me. I wore this for full day, flight days on an airplane with a mask on. I've been wearing this one since January, so it's, it's gone with me through lots of different climates, lots of different traveling and planes, and it's one that always looks good by the end of the night. It has just a very smooth, soft matte finish. My skin type, if you're new here, was super oily, then I went on Accutane, then it got super dry, and now I would say it's pretty normal. If I stay on top of my skincare, I can keep the dryness and like flakiness at bay, so I would say now I'm more just like normal. But I do have some acne scarring, redness, and textured skin. The one con I have with this foundation is that it is very fragranced. If you ever smelled a Dior foundation, it's just very perfumed. You feel like you're putting a perfume like on your face. It does doesn't linger, like it does go away, but I just think that's something that we just need to cut out foundation, fragrance altogether. There's no point for it to exist. Next foundation, no one is gonna be shocked here, but I gotta mention it because it is definitely still in my top five. It's the Purito BB Cream. This is what the old packaging looked like. This is the new packaging. They did change the packaging and come out with a couple more shades. It's $10, so very affordable, but it only comes in six shades. Credo is an Asian beauty brand, so in the past they were catered more towards Asian skin tones. However, this product has definitely like spread beyond that market now. It's probably where the, the few shade expansion came in, but they still could massively, massively, massively improve the shade range. The shade I'm wearing today is 27 Sand Beige. This is my tanner shade, but when I'm fair, 21 is the perfect shade for me. It has this like grayish, true neutral undertone. It's gonna look super gray when you first put it on, but if you have a neutral undertone, that one is so nice because it almost like adjusts to your skin tone a little bit. 
But I've talked about this foundation for years because it is truly one of the best I have found. You like a dewy, very plump, healthy looking foundation that does have coverage. But one of the things I like with this is that you can sheer it out. If you use your fingers and you just use a small amount, it can look super natural. And like, if you're just going on a walk and you want a little something, use your fingers, just smooth a little bit on, but you can also make this completely full coverage, hello hair, if you apply it with a foundation brush and use a decent amount. I really like that this is essential oil free and there's no fragrance in here, which is great. That's one of the changes they made when they reformulated. And from you guys, I have heard that this works great on oily skin and from experience, I know it works amazing on dry skin because it is a very like moisturizing, plumping kind of formula. It just smooths over texture and smooths over dryness very well. It doesn't crease, I can set it or not set it. Because I've been liking more of a satin finish lately and not like super, super dewy, I did set it today with the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation in 150. I just put a little bit on my forehead and then around my pores and on my chin right here. Because the shade range is so shitty, you could get whatever you think is the closest shade. I'm mixing either you know, lighter, more yellow, whatever you need, or darker foundation to make the shade work for you. Next so up we have the Makeup Forever HG Skin Foundation. So this is a newer release for Makeup Forever. They discontinued their Ultra HD foundation, which was one of my favorite foundations. And then they came out with this and I am happy to report that I love this version as much as the original Ultra HD. This is $43, comes in 40 shades. This is Y108. It is a little bit too yellow for me. One thing with this foundation is that the shades do lean very yellow. I've tried a few of the shades, but this one I've been wearing for, I wanna say at least four months now, four or five months. If if you need a long wearing satin finish foundation, whoa, this thing fully lasts. This looks like skin, but has coverage and is a beautiful satin finish. This is one of those foundations that the finish totally changes depending on what you put underneath. Like if I have a super glowy SPF underneath, this looks much more glowy versus if not, it looks more like a true satin finish. So I like that you can like really address this one and it just is comfortable on the skin. It's super long lasting. Again, this is one that I've worn for one of the days I tested this was a 14 hour airport day and it looked incredible by the end of the night. I don't get creasing with this, it stays on. It doesn't dry down to like a powder finish or anything, but it does set down. It has a nice like on there kind of feel, but to where I don't have to powder my face in order to put powder, blush and bronzer over top. Another thing I love about this is that it looks like very just softening over my pores. Overall, I wouldn't call it like a ultra blurring foundation. I do think the Dior Forever Matte Foundation is more blurring than this one, but it does have this just like softening effect around my nose like pores. I actually get the best coverage with this one with a sponge, so that's how I like to apply it, but it's just one of those that I know is gonna last throughout the day and look good on my skin. And again, this is one that I've tried in like all different climates like Miami, Austin, San Diego, here, Chicago, and no matter where I am, it has held up. Next up we have the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. This is different than the normal Synchro Skin. There's like a more matte version, which I don't love. And then there's the Radiant Lifting version, which is friggin' incredible. This foundation retails for $47, comes in 30 shades. I have 260 and 240 for my tanner shades, but that's like a little bit light. And my pale shade is 120 Ivory. If you have textured skin or you have more mature skin, I think this is one of the most beautiful, just smoothing, plumping, radiant looking foundations it is that like glow from within look it just makes your skin look friggin beautiful and I love the coverage they say medium to full coverage make that ice man I think this is full coverage but again you can sheer out foundations just using less whatever it's SPF 30 they say it's water resistant and transfer proof I haven't tested the water resistant claim but I don't feel like this is one that is like incredibly incredibly long lasting if you have issues with your foundation coming off throughout the day I would say go with the makeup forever one or the Dior forever matte and the next one I'm gonna talk about over this. It's not that it doesn't hold up well because on my skin it does and it doesn't crease on me, but it's not as long lasting as those other foundations I just mentioned. One thing I love about this though is that it blends out so easily without streaks. Like this is one of those that you can just put on, blend out with a brush, you don't have to worry about it streaking like literally five seconds because of the coverage. You don't have to like fuss with it. You don't have to build it up. It's just like a quick one and done. Like if I was doing like a five minute makeup look, if you're a mom and you don't have a lot of time, but you like full coverage and you like that dewy look, this might be a good foundation because it's seriously so easy to just like throw on and go. Definitely radiant finish. But again, I just feel like my skin looks nice and like juicy when I have this on. <laughs> 
Next foundation I don't physically have here with me because I left it in San Diego. I had to majorly downsize my bags and get rid of some weight, but this I had to mention. But I've been loving this one for about, I wanna say like three years now because it was in my best foundations of 2020 video, so at least three years. It's the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. I think this is the best foundation NARS makes, but it is very finicky and there's definitely a learning curve with it and I have some things to talk about with this. It's $40, comes in 34 shades and the shade I use is Mont Blanc. So this is a full, full opaque coverage foundation. Very high coverage, definitely the most coverage out of anything I'm talking about. And it has a true soft matte finish. I also think this is the most matte out of any of them I'm talking about. It's also incredibly long lasting. Like if you live in a humid climate, you are living somewhere super hot and you need something that's like truly gonna stay on your skin throughout summer, I would recommend this foundation if you like coverage. And I have a whole foundation routine using and showing you exactly how I like to apply this foundation. So I'll leave all those videos linked down below if you wanna see exactly how I recommend to apply this. If you use certain techniques with this foundation, I think it can really improve how it looks. You have to use a very small amount and you have to use a sponge and do some other things. But if you've tried this foundation and it like just totally wasn't working for you, Check out that foundation routine video because it might just be the way that you're applying it. This wasn't a foundation for me that I like immediately loved. It took some figuring out, but if you need a true like humidity, sweat proof, waterproof foundation, you like a matte finish, that's a good one. It's also great to mix with foundations because you just need the smallest amount and it'll just help with longevity. Like a giant ass crane outside just beeping for the last two minutes. Oh my God, this friggin' crane. Okay, I've waited about literally eight minutes and the crane is still moving, still grooving, still beeping. So I'm gonna do this outro. Luckily, that was everything, but I'm gonna have all the foundations I talked about listed down below in the description box, along with my favorite brushes and sponges to apply foundation. So everything is down below. But I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if there's any other top foundations you wanna see, like top for dry skin. The thing is right now, since I'm traveling, I don't have my whole collection with me. So it would be a lot of like popping in the picture, you know, if I did something like that. But let me know, I can make it happen. If you are new to my channel, I have hundreds of foundation reviews. I have 15 days of foundation playlist, foundation Friday, all the foundation content will be listed down below in the description box. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Watch this crane stop beeping the second I... Are you kidding me? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but right as I said that, it freaking stopped beeping. Okay, I forgot to tell you the makeup on the rest of my face and the crane has stopped beeping for 10 seconds. So here we go, we're gonna power through. I told you the foundation. For bronzer, I use the Natasha Denona Bronzing Glow. This is like a very reddish, it's almost like a blush shade, but sometimes I like it if I just wanna like really warm up my face. Dior Highlighting Palette, I've been loving this. It is so stunning. I mix like the light gold shade with the pink. For eyes, I used ColourPop Set in Stone. I really don't like the Twist of Slate palette, which is like the cool tone version of this, but this one is pretty. And the shade Concrete, which is what I have all over my lid, is beautiful. For a cream blush, I use Believe Beauty Tropical Sunset. This one's like very peachy. And then for lips, I put on Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. And then I use Patrick Ta Full Syringe. I have mixed feelings on this, like for the price. I like how it looks. It's like a very nice juicy looking, like summery kind of gloss, but for the price, I just feel like it comes off pretty fast. And it is supposed to be like a, you know, plumping kind of gloss. And it has the tingle for like the first I don't know, I just got it on my hair, 30 seconds. I just feel like it doesn't stay on as long as I would like, but I really like the color of this one. Okay, that's it. Now we're done.